Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to start our afternoon session with two of our DSGA team members, Rachel Hart and Will Alford. They'll be speaking to you about quality assurance. Uh, Rachel and Will, good afternoon. Hey, everybody. This is Will. Hey, this uh, is welcome Rachel. back. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there we go. <laughs> so you can see our faces. <laughs> All right, so welcome back. We're going to dive into the quality assurance module uh, of Site Improve. So we'll give you a little intro into quality assurance and what that is. And then I'll show you some of the different tools you can use using the quality assurance module on Site Improve. And we'll talk about your quality assurance score and what goes into that and how you can improve it. And also setting priorities for your site. Okay, so what is quality assurance and why does it matter? You know, at a high level, everybody talked about this this morning, our digital properties have big important jobs to do. And for many uh, of our constituents, they are the state of Georgia to them. Um, Nikhil talked a little bit about the Digital Center of Excellence. And uh, that's a statewide working group that sets standards for our digital properties. And so um, everything that we do inside Improve is it's a tool that helps us meet that standard that has been set for us. Um, and so that can be around accessibility. It could be around the grade level of the content that uh, the writing has to be, things like that. Site Improve helps us measure all of that and meet the standards that this statewide working group has set for us. The quality assurance portion is divided into uh, user experience, content quality, content freshness, and then security. And those are the factors that go into creating the quality assurance score. This is the mission statement for the Digital Center of Excellence for um, the state of Georgia to ensure a consistent, reliable, and accessible user experience content must be comprehensible and usable for all site visitors. All right, so let's look under the hood a little bit and see the uh, site improve module. And this is what your main dashboard looks like. So as you can see, you've got different portions of it. Uh, you can see issues that you might need to fix, like broken links or misspellings. You can see that you get a score for content quality, content freshness, security, and user experience, and that rolls up into your overall quality assurance score. One of the things that you'll want to do, and we'll talk about more in training, is setting policies. And these are the policies that the tool will help uh, flag areas for you to fix. And so I look at this as basically like an editorial style guide. It's the place where you set your styles on different things like, um, you know, like we always spell out governor, we never abbreviate that. Um, things like that are things that help you look for mistakes. It's the things that we'll do at an enterprise wide level across all of GovHub. And then you'll be able to add policies that apply to only your site and your agency that are just specific to you. Okay, so this is kind of what that looks like. So you can see one of these policies on the dashboard here. One of the policies we put in says short words repeated in succession. So that might indicate that, you know, it's basically like a typo and that we can correct that. Okay, um, another thing that you can uh, check in the dashboard is your check history. And so that's just a way for you to Maybe you can go back, you, you know you had some problems and you're not sure why, and so you can go, um, you know, check a certain time frame and figure out maybe what was going on there and um, see when those issues were happening and fix it. So, like, that's what this looks like. So, like, if you had, like, a steep drop in traffic or, or something like that, you could, you could go check and see if there was something broken. Okay, uh, next you can check out your, um, this is something that's just a tool for you to help manage the content on your site. It's called content inventory. And so this is for your content managers to, you can export um, reports for pages, links, documents, and media. And then you can drill down on performance and scoring for each type of data. It's just a way to help you know what you've got and what you need to uh, work on. So that's an example there. 
Okay, so um, your quality assurance score, I'm gonna turn it over to Rachel now to uh, talk about that. Awesome, so what are the actual pieces that go into your score? And we'll touch on this a bit already, but it's broken into these four different categories, user experience, content quality, security, and content freshness. And these four categories don't have equal weight the system recognizes that user experience is going to be more important for the quality assurance of your website than content freshness is. So they're weighted differently to come into your total score. So again, taking a look at the dashboard, you can see these four breakdowns over here on the left that each have their own score out of 100. And then with those weights taken into consideration, those come together to create your overall QA score. And so if you click on this score breakdown link here, and this is gonna be in all three of the dashboards that we're talking about today, then you can get into this list of related issues on your website and it'll give you some indication of, are you doing well? Are you, uh, is this something that you need to work on? So I'll talk more now about what these different issues are broken down by category. So starting with user experience, again, this is the highest weighted of the four categories. Um, this is really focusing on making sure that people can get to the information that you're putting out there. So it's, it's addressing the navigation and access of information on your site. So some issues that are related to user experience are broken links, having documents in formats other than PDFs, and having images larger than one megabyte. So starting off with broken links, you know, pretty obvious, it's gonna make it harder for people to find information on your website. This also affects the trust that people will have with your brand as a whole. So, uh, you know, we as a government, we already have um, sometimes questionable brands. Some people don't trust us just going into it. So we need to do everything that we can to make sure that we maintain their trust. And part of that is going to be to keep our promises with them. So this is a quote from Nielsen Norman Group. That's an organization that posts a lot of usability research online. And we look to them frequently as experts in the field. So they put out any broken promise, large or small, chips away at trust and credibility. So they actually said this quote about having good link text and you know, what is the worst kind of link text other than one that doesn't even go to a working page. So we need to make sure that our links are functional so that we can really keep people, um, make sure that they trust us. Uh, because once they hit a broken link on your website, you've lost them at that point. They're gonna return to Google. So as a case study, I wanna walk through, a, a couple weeks ago, I was looking at the QA score on georgia.gov. And I noticed that all of a sudden it was not looking fantastic. Um, you can see the user experience score here is under 50, which has a pretty significant impact on our overall quality assurance score. So I looked into the issues and found that there was one link on every single page because it was in our footer. So it was this call link right here. And that goes to the contact page on georgia.gov. And so when I saw that, I realized, oh, I had just changed the contact page on Georgia.gov. And I thought that I had gotten all the redirects and everything set up correctly, but Site Improve helped me to figure out, oh no, I actually missed this one. And so this had just this one link. It took me 10 minutes to fix. It had a huge impact on our score. So after I fixed it, then, you know, we were good again. So you can see these dots show where our scores were with just that one broken link. And by fixing it, and this is something that Travis actually indicated earlier in his talk, you know, certain things can have a huge impact depending on what they are and where they are on your site. So the broken link report inside Improve, um, you can have it list your broken links by pages that these links are on, or you can actually have it listed by the link itself. And then something pretty nifty that Site Improve does, it will also look through the PDFs that are on your website and it'll um, find any broken links that are in there. So again, you can have those listed by the PDF or you can have them listed by the link itself. All right, so then the next piece in user experience is document formats. So like I said, this is looking for any documents on your website that are not a PDF. The reason behind this being that it requires paid software. So something like a Word document, if you don't have access to Word, then you might not know how to access that information. And also, even if I do have Word on my computer, I'm not gonna have it on my phone. So it's gonna be more difficult for me to get this information that you're putting out there. And a lot of people are using phones to access their websites. 
and this is more than just something that affects your site improve score. This is also going to be a, a usability standard in our next version of standards and guidelines for state Georgia digital properties. So Chelsea will share a link in the chat actually to go to um, a, a training page. Thanks, Chelsea, um, which kind of walks through how you can think about these different file formats and what might be a better, more appropriate format for them. And, you know, I say use PDFs, but really it's use PDFs if you absolutely have to. In a lot of cases, we really don't need to have our content separated onto a separate document. It can just be on the web page itself. And that's going to be better for a lot of reasons, including usability, accessibility, SEO, all of these different pieces are impacted by having your information hidden in documents rather than just being on the website itself. So whenever you can, just keep that in mind. So uh, this is what the report will actually look like in Site Improve. It just lists out all of your different documents and what type they are. So then large images. Um, again, so this is any images that are larger than one megabyte uh, that will impact your QA score. So reasons for this being it's worse for your search engine optimization. Um, and Amanda and Erica are going to be talking later this afternoon all about SEO and what goes into that. But this also, you know, will make your site load slower and it's going to eat up your user's data if they're accessing this on their phone without Wi-Fi. So the way that this looks, you can uh, just look at all of the images. So Will mentioned earlier these different inventories that you can look at for your site. So you can look at all media files that are on your website and then have it sorted by size so that you can very quickly and easily find the largest images on your website and go ahead and fix it. So then we have a couple more links that Chelsea's going to share out. And so basically just keep your image size as small as it needs to be. You know, you might take a photo on your phone and even phones are going to create such high quality images that that's still going to be pretty large. So you can bring down the dimensions and then you want to make sure that you're optimizing and compressing your images. You can reduce the file size quite a bit without actually any noticeable difference. So I've mentioned mobile now a couple of times. And so you might be thinking, hey, Rachel, why do you care so much about mobile? Uh, aren't our websites already responsive? Well, yes. So as Nikhil mentioned earlier, mobile is already huge on our websites. This is the overall stats for all website users of the GovHub platform for last year. And about 45.8% of people were accessing our websites on mobile. And during a crisis, this number goes up. So this year so far, mobile usage across all of Georgia sites has surged to about 60% of our traffic. Obviously, we're in a global pandemic right now, so that uh, kind of indicates why. So what is really the big deal? Sure, people are using their phones, but can't they still use Wi-Fi? Well, about 17% of Americans are smartphone only internet users. So what this means is that they have a smartphone, they're using that to access the internet, but they don't actually have access to high-speed internet at their homes. And I was actually just talking to a friend of mine the other day. She teaches fourth grade in Fulton County. And um, you know, with all of this online learning that's happening right now, it was made clear to her that only two of the students in her class actually have high-speed internet at their homes. Only two people in an entire class of fourth graders. So it's, it's definitely more of a problem than you might think. And if we break this down by income level, the people who are most impacted by this are those who have lower income. So people who make $30,000 or less a year, about a quarter of those people are what we call this smartphone only internet users. So if we look at our actual audiences here, um, you might've seen this breakdown before. This is one way that we think of the users of our website. They either have an urgent need or a not urgent need. And they are either the person who they themselves is the one accessing the service or they're helping someone else access the service. So the population that we're looking at here is this vulnerable population. These are the people who need to access these services for themselves and it's urgent. And we're here to serve the public. If the people who need us the most are coming to our websites on a phone, then we need to make sure that's where we're serving them. 
All right, so on to content quality. If user experience is all about just even getting access to the information, content quality is making sure that you understand it and you quickly understand it. So this addresses misspellings and readability. Misspellings, of course, if you can, you want to avoid those off the bat, but I understand that things will slip through every so often and Set Improve will help you find those. So when you're looking at the report, you're gonna to go to this needs review section. So this is gonna list out all of the possible misspellings that are on your website. You can see a lot of them are going to include names of people or of programs. And so you'll wanna scan through this list and find what is actually a misspelling and make sure that you go fix that. After you've been using Site Improve for a bit and you're ready to level up to have more permissions within the, the system, then at that point, you'll be able to actually indicate what is a confirmed misspelling versus what's okay. So that's just gonna make it easier for you to sort through this list in the future. Okay, so readability. We talk about readability a lot. Having a readable website doesn't only help people with less education. It helps people with disabilities. So for example, if you think of someone who is dyslexic, they might be an expert in the field that your website is addressing, but it's still gonna be more difficult for them to understand the content if you know, you have all these long sentences, and long paragraphs. It's also going to be harder for anyone to understand the content. Really, we just need to make it as simple as possible. No one is asking for uh, beautiful language on your website. They're just asking to understand it. So inside Improve, we use a Flesh Kincaid grade level test. This is an automated readability test. There are a few different tests and they all work pretty similarly. But this one specifically is looking at word length as count by syllables and sentence length as counted by the number of words in the sentence. And at the end of this, it's going to give you um, a US grade level for the text. So you can see on this chart here, this is the report for it. It will just assign a different grade level for all of the pages on your site. And we ask that you aim for a middle school reading level. So sixth, seventh, eighth grade, just keeping it as simple as possible. Because another point from Nielsen Norman Group, just because people can read and understand your content, it doesn't mean that they will. On average, people only read about 28% of the words on your page. No one is going to read your web pages top down. You need to make it easy for them to scan. So a few tips for how to do that. Basically, you wanna have short sentences, short paragraphs, Separate your different sections on your page with headers. That's gonna make it a lot easier to scan. Using common words instead of uh, you know, crazy language um, and using bulleted and numbered lists when that's appropriate. Just different ways to break down your text. And uh, you, know, you guys have used the term a wall of text for your web pages before. Well, these are some of the ways that you can break up that wall a bit. Okay, so going into security and I'll go a bit, um, faster through these bits because they're pretty straightforward and you're probably not gonna have too much of an issue with them. So security, two pieces that go into this. One is having any publicly exposed social security numbers on your website. So Set Improve is just going to scan for this number format. And the other one is uh, having any links to unsafe domains. So it's looking for sites that have been flagged by Google as being potentially risky. Content freshness. Really, the, the whole point of this is not to uh, rig the system, really. It's, it's just a tool to help you know the state of your content and know what might need to be looked at. So still content. Site Improve actually is just going to look to see if you have any new content within the past 30 days. As far as I'm aware anyway, I couldn't find any way to uh, like see how recently updated your content has been or anything like that. So that is something that you'll want to actually look at uh, the content library on your website to see, has your content been touched since we migrated your website into GovHub? Is any of this old stuff uh, out of date and does it need to be updated? And then media and documents, it's, those are two other issues that fall within this category. So maybe you have newer documents that really should replace the older ones. So at that point, should you be removing the older ones? So um, Set Improve will point out any documents or media that have been around for three years or more. So setting priorities. I know that you all are thinking this is a lot, 
where do I even start? So there are a few different ways that we can look at this, starting with the severity of the issue. So how bad is it? And you can think about the relative weight of the different categories. User experience issues are gonna be more important than content freshness issues. Look at the number of pages that the issue is affecting. So thinking back to that broken link on the GeorgiaGov footer, uh, that was a very severe issue because it was touching every single page on the website. And then something specific for readability, how bad is the page readability? So something that is at the postgraduate level obviously is going to be worse than something that's at ninth grade. How easy it, is it to fix? So a few issues are gonna be pretty quick fixes, like fixing broken links, fixing misspellings, and making your images smaller. Some things that might be a little bit more difficult could be turning your non-PDF documents into PDFs or other content types, sorting through the full list of misspellings to see what possible issues you have and, and ranking those as uh, actual issues or approved words and readability. So obviously that's gonna take a lot of thought to figure out the best way to word your content to make it easy to understand. And then finally, what, what is the necessity of this information? So it's going to be more needed if it's a higher page level. So your homepage, your top nav items are gonna be more necessary than those pages that are hidden deeper in your navigation. How many page views is it getting? And you can sort all of these different reports by page views. And for broken links specifically, how many clicks are there on the broken links? And just a final thought on this, you don't need to fix an entire page all at once. When deciding where to start, ask yourself those three questions. How bad is it? How easy is it to fix? And how important is it? And look at this on the issue level, not necessarily the page level. So, if, if you have one page that is at a postgraduate reading level, you don't need to all in one sitting get it down to a sixth grade reading level. You know, make it a little bit better and uh, work on your top content on your site to make it incrementally better over time. So I'll pass it back to Will to wrap up. Thanks, Rachel. That was great. So I know it's when we score things and give you a number grade, it's very tempting to want to game the system but really quality assurance uh, isn't about chasing a score. This is really to help us do the right thing and it's about getting your users the information and services that they need. Okay, so what are our key takeaways? Basically, you know, just measuring these factors will help you know what to work on. And uh, this tool shows you what to fix and how to fix it. You can gradually make these suggested fixes and improve your score. And that means a better site experience and better government for Georgians. Simple as that. <laughs> so thanks a lot. Thank you, Will and Rachel. We have a bunch of questions for you all, and uh, oh, we'll try to get <laughs> we'll try to get to a few of them. So the first one uh, is about policies. What kind of policy should I think about adding to my site? Okay, um, well, uh, we will have, uh, I think I said, some enterprise-wide policies that are really directed by the, uh, the Statewide Digital Center of Excellence Working Group, and uh, also just sort of our ed editorial styles there. And there are also uh, lots of other types of policies you can add in that affect accessibility and user experience and all these factors that we looked at that are the standard for your site. But like at a, at a individual site level, you might, have terminology that just is specific to your agency, that you want things referred to always in a certain way, or like we will always use the same, the date format will always be written this way, or our telephone numbers are always gonna be written a certain way, or we're gonna always refer to COVID-19 uh, as COVID-19 and not some other, um, formulation of that or something like that. It's just, it's just a way to create a standard and have consistency. So those, are, those would be some things and we'll have training and we'll be discussing uh, how to help you set these for yourself. Cool, okay, great, great. So another question we have here is that uh, they say that my website content is meant for professionals uh, and we need to speak to them with specialized terms. Does that really need to be at the middle school reading level? Right. So, um, like I said, this is 
this could have impact more than just people who maybe don't know the words. It's going to impact people who have disabilities. It's going to make it harder for everyone to read and understand. Um, so really, if you need to have these specialized terms, we totally understand that. Just put it after you have a short plain language summary of the content. And uh, WCAG 2.1 actually goes into that as an accessibility standard that if you do need to have complicated language, like we understand that, but there needs to be something upfront that will help explain it for people so that they can get at least a quick look into what the content is going to be going into. You know, still work on the content to make it as simple and as easy to understand as possible. Um, if there are certain words that you just can't get around, um, then that is actually a decision that you can make inside Improve. You can approve certain words, and uh, this is something that's understood as a possible issue within readability is sometimes you just can't get around it. So you can approve these words and that won't count against you towards your score. But before you go and just approve all of the hard words, you know, think about it first, see if there's anything that you can do to make it as easy as possible. Great, so that sounds like a good solution. Uh, we have a question about files here. Uh, what if you're providing uh, like Excel as a download option in addition to PDF, is that okay to do? I would say so. If you are providing an Excel file to use as a template, then that might be an appropriate situation to provide an actual editable spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And the solution that we've used on our team is actually to use Google Docs and Google Sheets because these are accessible on all devices for anyone for free. And that can get you most of the same functionality as what you can get in the Microsoft products. Great, yeah. Uh, along the same line, question about files, it says, trying to ask if they understood this correctly, that that a site performance will improve if we have less links to download documents and more embedded documents. I think maybe they mean embedded content throughout the site. Is that true? That it will perform better? Um, that there will be a better site performance will affect the DCI score? So I can't speak from a technical perspective if that affects your site performance from, from that perspective, but in terms of uh, the user experience and getting all of this content easy to find from search and easy to access, then as much as possible keeping the content on the page itself. And so, like what I'm talking about here is not necessarily like a worksheet that people need to print out or something like that. Um, this is talking about like, are you hiding your important content behind PDF brochures when it really just needs to be on the website itself? Okay, yes, that makes sense. Um, thank you so much, Rachel and Will, for your presentation.